Hello everyone and today we are going to learn about the cell transformation and cell cloning. So cell transformation. Cell transformation it means that transformation is taking place. So there are changes that are going to take place right. So the changes may be uh, because of the genetic material or maybe because of some different factors the change might take place and then cell cloning. So cell cloning, we know that clone is an identical copy of an individual. So cloning, the cloning of the cell, it means that the production of a population of single cell is done. So we we'll learn in detail more about the cell transformation and cell cloning. Now cell transformation, the changes are involved because of the genetic material and cell cloning. It involves the production of a population of single cell. So the transformation of cells. First, the cells are transformed. So what it is exactly? So the change in the phenotype of a cell which takes place due to a new genetic material. Because of the new genetic material, the change takes place in the phenotype of a cell is the transformation. So, with regard to the cultured cell, transformation may involve because of the spontaneous or because of the induced permanent phenotypic alterations. Now, it may be because of the heritable changes that are taking place in DNA or maybe because of the gene expression. So, the transformation of cells may occur due to many, any of the causes that might result because that cause that will cause change in the genetic material now it may be because of the spontaneous process it may be because of the infection with transforming virus it may be because of the factor from gene tra transfection that may be taking place because of the exposure to the chemical carcinogens and the exposure to ionizing radiation so the transformation of cells might be take might be taking place because of these factors now there are some characteristics of transformed cells the characteristics of transformed cells may be because of the it may be in the form of genetic or structure or growth it may be anything so that characteristics of transformed cells that may occur because of the genetic in, may occur in genes, may occur in the growth, may occur in structure, it may occur in anything. So there are some characteristics that are involved like the genetic instability, then the immortalization, malignancy, aberrant growth control. So coming to the genetic instability. Now the cell lines in culture are very prone to genetic instability because of the reason that a majority of normal finite cell lines are usually genetically stable but the other cell lines like from other species like my, uh, mouse are genetically unstable and it may get easily transformed. So the continuous cell lines that are derived from the tumors of all the species are unstable. Now, the normally occurring genetic variations in the cultured uh, cells are because of some reasons they are the genetic variations that are taking place. One, the, uh, one factor is the high rate of spontaneous mutations in the in vitro because of the high rate of cell proliferation. The other factor is the continued presence of mutant cells in culture as they are normally uh, not normally eliminated. So genetic instability is one factor coming to the immortalization. Now what is immortalization? Immortalization means the acquisition of an infinite lifespan by a cell is immortalization. Now most of the normal cells are like from the different species have got a definite lifespan like a finite lifespan of 20 to 100 generations. But some cells from mouse, most of the tumor cells have infinite lifespan as they go on producing continuous, life, uh, continuous cell lines. So the immortalization is the acquisition of an infinite lifespan by a cell is immortalization. Now control of finite lifespan of cells, this means that the finite lifespan of cultured cells is regulated by about uh, 10 senescence genes. 
Now, this may be because of the uh, fact that the genes synthesize products that inhibit the cell cycle progression. So, uh, it is strongly believed that the immortalization occurs due to the inactivation of some of the cell cycle regulatory genes. Now, the regulatory gene example such as the P53 gene, it may inactivate the cell cycle. So, immortalization of cells by the viral genes. Now, there are some viral genes that are responsible for the immortalization to take place take place like the examples such as sv for, for tlt then the htrt then the ebv then from among these uh, genes the most common one is the sv for t uh, for olt it is not for t it is for olt so it is the most common one which is used to induce the immortalization and the product of this gene that is the T antigen binds to the senescence genes like the P53. So what happens over here is the uh, in this uh, immortalization of viral genes that the uh, SVO4 OLT binds to the T antigen uh, with uh, the T antigen of this gene binds to the senescence genes such as the P53 and RB. Now this binding restricts the surveillance activity of the senescence genes resulting in an increased genomic instability and activity leading to further mutations favoring the immortalization. Now for the process of immortalization to take place the cells are infected with retroviruses containing immortalization genes. Now, before they enter the senescence, they are infected with retroviruses. Now, the lifespan of the cells can be extended by 20 to 30 uh, population doublings. The cells cease to proliferate and enter a crisis phase. So, don't forget that they enter after that to crisis phase that may be last for several months. Now, after the at, at the end of the crisis phase, a small portion of cells can grow and it can eventually become immortalized. So this is the immortalization of cells by viral genes. Now coming to the immortalization of cells by the telomerase induction. Now what happens in the telomerase induction is the most important cause of finite lifespan of cells that is senescence is due to the telomeric shortening that is followed by the cell death. Now you know that cell death is nothing but the apoptosis that take place. So if the cells are transfected with telomerase gene which is HTRT, the lifespan of the cells can get extended and a small portion of the cells can become immortal. Now this is about the immortalization that what it is exactly then the uh, immortalization of cells by the viral genes and then how the immortalization of cells is done in the telomerase induction. Now coming to the aberrant growth control, the transformed cells and the cells from tumors grow in culture that show many abbreviations with respect to its growth and control. Now that may be because of the anchorage in, in independence or because of the contact inhibition or low serum requirement so the uh, occur, these anchorage independence they occur several uh, times and the several changes on the cell surfaces takes place of transformed cells now these may include the alterations in the cell surface glycoproteins and integrins and loss of the fibronectin now some of the transformed cells may totally lack cell adhesion molecules the modification on the surface of the transformed cells leads to a decrease in cell uh, that is cell substrate addition and the net result causes the reduction uh, requirement for attachment and spreading of the cells to proliferate. Now this is nothing but the anchorage independence that the net result is that the reduced requirement is for attachment and the spreading of the cells to proliferate. Now the anchorage independent cells what they do they grow in a disorganized fashion and they may be compared uh, now these cells may be comparable with the tumor cells detached from the uh, native tissue which can grow in the foreign tissue that is the formation of the metastasis takes place over here. So that is anchorage independence. 
Now coming to the contact inhibition. Contact inhibition, the transformed cells are characterized by loss of contact inhibition. Now it can be observed by the morphological changes uh, that are taking place in the disorganized monolayer cells or and it results in the reduced density limitation of growth which leads to higher saturation of the density compared to the normal cells that is the contact inhibition that the transformed cells are characterized by loss of the contact inhibition maybe because of the morphological changes that are taking place now low serum requirement now transformed cells of or the tumor cells have low serum dependence than the normal cells now it is mostly due to the secretion of the autocrine growth factors by the transformed cells. Like uh, the examples such as the, uh, the growth factors which are produced by the tumor cells like the CSF that is colony stimulating factor. Then the uh, transforming growth factor or gastrin releasing peptide. Now uh, they may produce the autocrine factors uh, with during the active stage of the cell proliferation that is the low serum requirement now coming to the thermorigenicity uh, coming to thermorigenicity we know that uh, cell transformation is a complex process and it involves it results in the formation of the neoplastic cells so the cell lines that are obtained from the malignant tumors are also trans are already transformed and they further undergo into transformation in the in vitro culture because of the factor of the immortalization, increased growth rate and reduced uh, anchorage dependence that we already studied. Now for the malignant transformation of cells that there are several steps that are required and there are two approaches that are done to understand the malignant associated properties of the cultured cells. One is the cells can be cultured from malignant tumors and they can be ca characterized or oh, and the second is the viral genes or the uh, chemical carcinogens can be used to transform the uh, untransformed cells so these are the two factors one is the cells can be cultured from malignant tumors and characterized and then the other one is the viral genes or chemical carcinogen carcinogens can be used to transform the untransformed cells now this is for the malignant transformation of cells this take, uh, steps are required now in uh, these are the characteristics of transformed cells in further lessons we'll more learn about the cell transformation and cell cloning so stay tuned for more lessons to come keep watching and if you like the video don't forget to click on subscribe button below and also don't forget to share and like the video thank you